So yeah, my name is Patty Minyard. I am a, a certified medical dosimetrist. Uh, I've been working as a technical sales specialist with Electa for about two years now. Um, I was a therapist for uh, 12 years and a dosimetrist in the clinic for about eight years. Uh, I got my degrees from uh, the University of South Florida and also from Long Beach State. So there it is. Here we go. Let's let's talk a little bit about uh, Monica 5. And let's run through the objectives really quick. I'm going to go through some of the key features in Monaco. And uh, we'll look a little bit at the ribbons-based interface. And I also want to show you the ease of transition between contouring and planning. And obviously, I'll be uh, showcasing the tools within Monaco. But while I'm doing this, I want you to think about how well you know your own treatment planning system. And are you using it to its potential? Because seamless transition between contouring and planning allows for more efficient planning, less work for you as a dosimetrist, and it gives you the ability to create more plans in less time. So we know we're doing what's best for our patients. I also want to talk a little bit about SBRT. Uh, and we want to compare a couple modalities, dynamic conformal arc uh, versus VMAP. OK? So Monaco 5 is a 510K approved, Windows-based, comprehensive treatment planning system. So I can do 3D, VMAP, IMRT, uh, SRS with support for cones, as well as multi-leaf. Um, yeah, multi-leaf, um, and also SBRT with multi-leaf and electrons with Monte Carlo algorithm. OK, there are a number of features that kind of differentiate Monaco. And I just want to talk about a few of them so that when I get into the program, um, you understand the terminology and you know what I'm talking about, OK? So let's start out with biological modeling. Um, these biological cost functions allow us to, use, to model tissue-specific dose responses. So when I talk about something called a serial cost function, it's just like a serial structure. We're worried about a high dose to a point. When I talk about a parallel cost function, I'm worried about dose to a volume. So these cost functions are allowing us to control the shape of the DVH. Now, in a lot of systems out there, if you want to control that shape of the DVH, change it. You have to put in multiple constraints within your, your uh, prescription page or your constraint page. Um, with Monaco, I can put in one cost function, like a serial cost function, and it's going to control many points on that curve with an emphasis on the high dose regions. Parallel cost function, again, we're going to control many points, but we're going to have an emphasis on that mean dose region. OK, constrained optimization. A lot of the systems out there today use what they call unconstrained optimization. So you'll put your targets in. You'll put in your organs at risk. You will set your weighting. And ultimately, they're kind of fighting amongst themselves to get what they need. In Monaco, it's constrained optimization. The PTVs are going to come first. We're going to get dose to them first before we start worrying about the organs at risk. Now, there's a checkbox on the constraint page that allows you to use a manual weighting feature. You could choose to calc out the plan unconstrained from the start. Or you could use constraint, let Monaco do it for you, and maybe go back in and push back on some structures that you need to tweak. Structure layering. So the order of your optimization structures really determines how the optimizer is going to treat those voxels. And for example, if I have three PTBs, I'm doing a head and neck. I've got PTB1, PTB2, PTB3 and I've 
layered them that way on the constraint page. If there's any overlap between one and two, PTV1 is going to own those voxels. If there's any overlap between two and three, two is going to own the voxels. So what that allows us to do is control the dose fall off between those structures without having to create ring structures. I can actually use that overlap region with something called a shrink margin and control how the dose falls off from one to the other. We also have something called surface margin. And this uh, can be programmed before you even start your optimization. It, uh, it keeps you from pumping high dose into the buildup region. So if I've got a head and neck plan, and I don't want dose in that first three to four millimeters of, of skin, I can tell the computer right up front, don't bother. Multi-criterial optimization <clears throat> really allows your constraints to be treated as a secondary objective. Again, this is a checkbox on the constraint page. Really what we're doing here is trying to push the dose down to that organ at risk as low as we possibly can without affecting the dose to the PTV. So we're trying to maximize how well we get the dose to that, that structure. Monte Carlo, you know, this algorithm, it's really considered the gold standard for accuracy. And it allows for a continuous arc calculation instead of being limited to dose approximations. When you have a pencil beam ray and you calculate at those control points, you get a star pattern effect. Looks like a static gantry. That's not really what's going on because, unfortunately, as the overlap between those pencil beam rays decreases, the information becomes less accurate. With Monte Carlo, the dose engine simulates the gantry rotation around the patient. So every photon particle is simulated at that random gantry angle, and you get a nice, smooth dose distribution. OK, sweet, sweet sequencer. Let me, let me kind of uh, explain the paradigm on this. If I have a full arc, 360 degrees, and I break it up into 30 degree arc segments. I now have 12 segments. In that first segment, the leaves are going to move unidirectionally from left to right, let's say. In the second segment, they'll move back right to left. In the third, we'll go left to right, and so on and so forth, alternating throughout that full arc. When I introduce something called segment shape optimization, that leaf travel is not going to be unidirectional anymore. The optimizer is going to combine and edit segments to give you the best modulation that your Linux can provide and give you a more improved uh, delivery. So if we can reduce the number of segments, we can reduce the treatment time that the patient's on the table. So SSOs, it's going to optimize the segment shape going to optimize our segment weights, our dose rate. It will improve our plan quality and give us a faster, more efficient treatment delivery. OK, so that's uh, the end of the PowerPoint. I hope we're all still awake. I haven't lost anybody. Just open that up. I think we're good. All right. So this is Monaco 5, and uh, you can see um, it's got the ribbons interface. We've got tabs across the top, and there are a number of tools that are associated with each of these tabs. And you can see a lot like what you're probably used to in your treatment planning system, pan and zoom, window leveling. Uh, we have the ability to throw a grid on the CT scan. We, we have 4D capability in Monaco, so if you've loaded in all your study sets and you create your cine view, you're able to measure what, how far it's moving in any one direction so that your ITV is appropriate. 
Uh, we also have tabs at the bottom and along the side. And this is just another way to put your tools right in front of you um, without taking away from what you're looking at. You see they expand and then compress when I mouse over them. The workspace is highly configurable. Uh, we have a number of layouts available to you that you can choose to use depending on your workflow. Uh, if you want, though, you can also create your own layouts. Hey, Patty, see if you can talk a little bit louder. OK, sure. We've got Fusion Tools, probably the same that you're used to. Um, plan options. Uh, if you, when you're CTing your patient, if you don't set the ISO at time of CT, it's very easy to um, send the shifts over to the therapist so they know where to move to get the ISO center for the plan. You can also include the table in your calculation if you choose. So we have that available as well. OK. All right, I want to move into talking a little bit about contouring and ease of transition between contouring and planning. And, and again, I'm going to show you the tools in Monica, but while I'm doing this, think about how you do these things. And think about, is there something more you could learn about your system that would make it easier for you? So let's see here. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. OK. And I just want to move this around a little bit. There we go. And move this down here a little bit. So obviously, all I have here is just a CT of a pelvis. The only contour that's on it is the skin at this point. And I want to get going. I want to get my prostate plan moving. So um, I'm going to have to add some contours, like the bladder, like the rectum, the prostate. Uh, if I come to my drop down, you can see it doesn't really load much for you when you first put the CT set in. Very easy to add an anatomical group. I'm just going to grab the prostate right here, say OK. And now if I come up to my drop down, you can see a number of structures have been added, the bladder, the prostate, the SV, whatnot. If we want to start with something like the rectum, if I come down here again, my structures tab, all of this kind of compresses and opens. It automatically assigns colors. Maybe it's not the color you want. You can grab pretty much anything you want. There you go. All right. So I'm going to start by uh, using a tool we call Easy Sketch. And it's a 3D contouring tool. So it's going to allow me to uh, draw at least the upper portion of this rectum um, and get going on it so we can kind of get started and move through this quicker. You can see I can see it in all three views, and I need that. So I'm just going to kind of drop points and tell the computer where I want to contour. And I'm also going to tell it where I don't necessarily want the contour. So you can make lines, too. You don't have to drop points. This is just a quick way to get started. Whoops. I'm crazy with the mouse. Um, it's a little dodgy down here inferiorly. Um, so I know I'm not going to be able to contour that appropriately with this particular tool, but this is a quick way to get me started. So if I just go ahead and say execute, there we go. So it's given us pretty good, gets us going. I kind of page through. I know I'm going to need to clean up down here a little bit, so I'm going to switch over 
to my paintbrush, and you can see the plus allows me to kind of add to the contour. I went too far on purpose. I bring that minus up and just clean it up that way. Maybe we'll just clean that up and start over. So it's just a quick way to get you going. So now we have a rectum structure in there that we can use as part of our plan. I'm going to come up here and grab the prostate. And this will be the next structure I draw. And I'm going to use a slightly different tool to do this. And so I'm not going to make it perfect. We're not going to waste time showing people how to contour things. We all know how to do that. So I'm just going to grab my shape and just kind of drag it. Give me a good start there. And you can move this around and stretch it if you need to in any direction. That. Just get to the top here. And I'm just going to call that the top of my prostate. OK. OK. There we go. Right about there. So if I just come up here and interpolate, now I've got a prostate structure that I can work with for my planning. So the last thing we're going to want to do is put the bladder in and a, and a PTD as well. And I want to show you a slightly different tool for the bladder. I'm going to start it right there. We're going to use our paintbrush, but we're going to use it in tandem with something called structure avoidance. So I can add a row of a structure that I want to avoid while I'm drawing this contour. You can add quite a few. We're just going to put the prostate in for this one, but it's a drop down. Anything you've already contoured, you can bring it up in this, in this window. So very nice. So now when I come over here to draw my bladder, if you're a little messy, you'll notice that I can kind of slam up against it and not worry about crossing over into it. So I'm just going to get a little messy here. My mouse is giving me fits, as you can see. A little shaky there. All right. OK, so again, I can just come back up and interpolate. And now I've got a bladder structure that I can work with along with my prostate, OK? So the last thing we want to do is put a PTV on here so that we can move forward into planning. Again, very simple. We're going to call it PTV. I'm just going to expand on the prostate. We don't need to put an advanced margin on this, but what we can do is um, maybe put a slightly different margin in each of the directions. Down here we'll break it. Maybe we'll put 0.7 on the anterior and uh, 0.5 posteriorly. No, that won't do it. Much more better. There we go. All right, so create. All right, so now we have a PTV that we can work off of. And I've quickly contoured my prostate structures. From here, I can move right into planning. If I come back to my CT set and right click on it, I say new monocle plan. Of course, we want to save this. We just went through all the trouble of doing all that hard work. And now I'm ready to move into planning. Now, everything in Monaco is template based. So we're going to start with a template before we start into our plan. All of the templates are organized via the delivery mode. So I've got a number of them under 3D, a number of them under DMLC, and VMAT and whatnot. 
these are templates that you create for your clinic. So they're based on the criteria you tend to use in your clinic. So I'm going to start by picking just a simple 3D prostate, head first orientation. These are the beams that are associated with this particular template. At this point, if you wanted to change the machine, very easy to do. It's a drop down. Same with the algorithm or the energy or where you want to place the center. It's all a drop down. Not a problem if you don't change it here. If you need to change it later, it's easy to do as well. So we're just going to go ahead, load these beams. I'm just going to put a margin on it, onto the PTV, the MLC, and bring it on over. All right, let me show you what came over with that template. Uh, the calc properties came over with it. Uh, if you don't want to use a grid spacing of 0.3, you're free to change it at this point. The templates are a starting point. They might be absolutely what you need. Maybe you need to change things. It's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and kind of turn these beams off because they're a little distracting. Uh, down here, prescription tab, this also comes over with the template. Uh, we've got it set up for 4,500, 25 fractions, 180 a fraction. You could change that dose if you wanted to. The beams come over locked, but you could unlock them. Uh, you could set them to equal weights. You could type in the weighting you want to use. Up to you. If we go back to the beams again, I can change things from here if I need to change the machine or the energy or where the center of the PTV is. I can still do that from here if I need to change the geometry, gantry angle, collimator angle. If I need to add a wedge or bolus, this is where I could do that as well. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and run a quick calc on this. In the 3D version in Monaco, we use a collapsed cone algorithm. It's attached to a GPU, so the calculations are quite quick. It's a quad core with 24 processors. Um, that is not what we're running off today. Unfortunately, I have a laptop. But if I had the full-up system, and when we have the full-up system and we were demoing it like at the AAPM a month ago, the calculation is within seconds. So it pops up immediately for you. There we go. So I come back to my ISO curves number of different ways I can look at these. I can look at them right like I've got them there. I could make lines thicker. Uh, I could choose to use an ISO fill. It's up to you. It's very configurable. You'll notice these little icons on the side here. I have the ability to turn any ISO dust line into a structure if I need to. So SBRT, SRS, we talk about that in, that in a little bit. You're going to need to know where your 30% and 50% is. Very easy uh, to convert it and use it when you need it. If I come up here and right click on my DVH, I can bring up something called a statistics page. And this is a very quick way to see how well my plan has done. If I come up to my PTV and just type in 4,500, I can see that I don't have appropriate coverage based on what I've got here. Got a couple of choices. Maybe we need some more margin. Maybe we need to come in here, I'm just going to shut the fluence off, and change the way we've got our MLCs. Not a problem. Come up here. I could redraw if I needed to, or I could pull these back, or I could stretch the field size. Very easy to work with, very easy to get to what I need. Maybe the problem is I just need to normalize this plan. If I come back down to my prescription, I could say, let's move to a relative isoline, maybe 96%. And now I've got better coverage. So you can see up top in the stats page, the coverage is now 100% on that PTB. And you can also see down here in the prescription page how much we rescaled this plan by. And this stays with the plan. 
So you never have to worry about if you've gone through a series of plans with a position, and you go back to this one, you can't remember what you normalized it to, it's right there in front of you, so you don't have to worry about what you showed the doctor. OK, so I got a 3D plan, and that's great. But what if I want to know what this looks like at, say, DMLC? Not a problem. Very easy. Come back down to my beams and change my delivery mode. Now you'll notice a few things go red. Um, and I could have saved that plan and said, OK, then we'll, uh, we'll make a new plan. I'm going to change to Monte Carlo. I can change to the energy that we have a commission for that. We're still going to leave it at the center of the PTB. A few things change for you, like your calc properties. Now it's going to ask you where you want to put your grid spacing and your statistical uncertainty. This is also where you would set that surface margin. So if I had a head and neck and I wanted to set it at 0 0.4, 0 0.3 like I have it here, this is where that would be applicable. Sequencing parameters, I would want to use my segment shape optimization. This is where I could tell it how many control points per beam, minimum segment width. And these are all parameters that your physicist would set up and want you to use. So this is clinic um, specific as to how you set these numbers. If I come down to my constraint page, obviously there's not going to be anything in it because we did the 3D calc initially. So we're going to have to add something. Very easy to do. I'm just going to click on to bring up some structures. I'm going to move my patient to the bottom of this pile. Take a second to get down there. Okay. Prostate, I don't want to do that. I'd rather do PTB. Rectum and bladder, those look good. We'll need those. Simple right click, add my cost function. And we talked about some of these. We talked about the pair parallel and the serial. Um, I put in a target. I'm just telling it. I want to make sure that at least 95% gets 4,500. That's what this command tells it. So I say OK. I may also want to add something called a quadratic overdose. And this is just to kind of keep my dose uh, homogeneous. So I'm just giving it 5% with an excess of maybe 50 centigrade. And that's all good for me, too. You can back to my script, or sorry, my constraint page. Right clip on my rectum, parallel, we talked about this, 50% of the dose to 50% of the structure. So 2250, 50%, K value, I'm not going to go into that. I can explain it at, a, at another time. But also, this is where you would add that shrink margin if you needed to, if there was overlap. But we're not going to. And we'll do the same thing for the bladder. We'll just give it the same parallel. 50% of the dose to 50% of the volume. OK, and then on the patient, I'm going to add something called a conformality. This is another way to keep my dose right around my PTB. And it's just a number, relative number from 0 to 1, 0 being very tight, 1 being a little looser. So with a prostate, we would set it at like 0.7. OK. So I come back to my prescription, make sure I'm still at 4,525. It's all still there, just like I brought over initially. We reset these. Now I'm ready to optimize. I'm ready to go. I can do a DMLC plan that quickly. I've moved from 3D right into that. Very easy to do. If I wanted to make it a BMAP plan, same thing. Come down to my beams, change it to BMAP. Now I've got my single arc. Set up my geometry to full 360. I've got it at 30 degree arc segments. You could make it 20 or whatever your clinic tends to do. And now that constraint page stays the same. And we're moving on to do a VMAP plan. So that's how easy it is to transition from contouring 
to 3D, to DMLC, to VMAP. Okay. All right, enough about that with Monaco 5. Let's talk about SBRT. And you know enough about the terminology so that when I start talking about different things in here, it's not going to be an issue for you now. Okay, SBRT, it's really a modality that's becoming commonplace in clinics today. And when you have something that's a singular lesion like this in the lung, it's very straightforward, doesn't necessarily need a lot of modulation. We're near the liver, we're near the heart, got to be careful about those structures. And when you initially look at it, you might think, hey, this has VMAP written all over it or, or some sort of an arc technique written all over it. Yeah, you could use VMAP for this. You could also use DMLC. You could also use IMRT. But I want to talk about something called dynamic conformal arc. And the one thing that's unique with DCA in Monaco is we pair it with segment shape optimization. So you're going to get a little bit of modulation along the edges of the field. So let's see what that looks like. Again, if I right click, my new Monaco plan, everything's template based. I pick DCA, pick my template. We're going to bring in three partial arcs. And when it comes to DCA, um, a multi-beam array really is more advantageous because it allows you to weight those uh, beams, arcs, differently. And you want to have that type of versatility when you're treating something with DCA. So I'm going to bring it in. And let's take a look at what we've got here. If I open up my beam page, and I'm just going to turn off the visibility slightly on these. Just leave the upper one up. We've got three arcs on this. They're partial arcs. The first arc is clockwise. It starts posteriorly, and it runs kind of just past midline. The next arc is down below. It's in red there. You can see it. And it's a partial arc. It's clockwise. Again, you can see what we're trying to do is stay on the right side, stay away from the heart, stay away from the cord. So we're minimizing those to those structures by simply not going through them. Our third arc, it's kind of a mirror image of the first one. It's counterclockwise. It starts out just a little past midline and goes posteriorly underneath the patient. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what else came over. Our calc properties, again, you can set your grid spacing and, and uh, uncertainty. Sequencing parameters, you have the opportunity to click off on segment shape optimization if you don't want to use it, but we're going to use it. I come down to my beams again. I'm going to lock the field edges on those because it is DCA. And I just want to zoom this in a little bit and show you this. There's our first arc, and the pink is our PTV, ITV volume. There's our second beam, and that's the one that's just a small arc underneath. And then there's our third beam. Again, we've got the, the PTV very tightly fit inside of those, those uh, edges of that field. OK, if we check our prescription, uh, it's kind of a standard prescription, 5,005 fractions, so 1,000 per fraction. Again, I'm going to let the computer set the weights on me, so I'm not even going to play with any of this right here. I'm going to go ahead and get this started and show you around a couple other things while it's calcing. Um, this is a Monte Carlo calc for DCA. 
We can see that back down here in the beams under general, my Monte Carlo for my algorithm. Uh, Monte Carlo works really well with lungs. You know, we need to be as accurate as we can with the lung. And uh, we all know it can get uh, a little dodgy when you're planning lungs. So it's nice to be able to rely on what your computer's telling you and know that it's accurate and it's giving you what you need to see. Uh, if I go back over to my structures and open that up, I want to show you that I've not forced the density or filled in the density on the lung structures, or on any structure, actually, that we're dealing with here. Um, usually when you do Monte Carlo counts, you don't need to do that. So there's no need to force any densities when we're running this calculation. We'll come back and look at our constraint page. Very simple constraint page. Um, I'm telling it I want to give 5,000 to that PTV. Um, I've put in a max dose constraint. Uh, let me explain that a little bit, why I would do something like that. When it comes to planning for SBRT or even SRS, there's kind of two schools of thought. Um, some say, you know, let that center just heat up, let it rip. It's free dose. It helps compress the 50% isodose line. It's, a, it's, you know, it's hitting that tumor as hard as we can. Go for it. There are other people that believe it's OK to let it heat up, but within reason. Because maybe we're near structures that if something happens, patient coughs, patient moves, um, and something bounces a little, uh, we want to minimize the potential damage that that hot spot in there could possibly do to a, a structure we don't want to really be treating, like say the heart or the cord. So you know, two ways to think about it. But, but either way, in order to compress that 50% isodose line, you're going to have to let the center heat up to some extent. So whether you just let it take off or whether you control that, it's your choice. It's your clinic's choice. Here we've chosen to kind of hold it to right around 30% hot, just to keep it more reasonable. Okay. Got the heart in there. Parallel cost function. We looked at that a little bit when I was showing you the other planning. Again, 25% of the heart is allowed to get 1,200. That's how I programmed this. Um, external, this is the skin contour. We've got conformality. Uh, we put it a little higher, closer to 1, because we're dealing with lung. We want to give it room to get dose in there. Okay, So that's why we set it up that way. If I open up my stats page, take a second here because it's calcing. And by the way, as it's calcing this, it's calcing all three arcs simultaneously. It's not just doing one, then the next one, then the next one going back. It's actually doing all three at the same time. So now our stats page has come up. We'll, we'll take a look at some of the factors we've got in here. PTV is getting some good coverage. We've already got 95%. You know, we're worried about that heart. Uh, your clinic will decide what parameters you want to use. Uh, in this particular case, um, about 80 to 90% of that heart is allowed to get 1170. We're nowhere near that. We're at 2%. Um, GTV is getting good coverage, full coverage, actually. actually. The liver. Uh, I believe 700 cc's is allowed to get 1220. In this particular case, that would mean 45%. We're nowhere near that. V20 is looking good. It's only about 4.3. Cord is allowed to get 800. It's not getting any of that, but it shouldn't. It's out of the way. We've oriented the beam such that we keep it out of the way, so I wouldn't expect that to be anything but zero. Okay. Let me see. All right. So let's just push this forward a little bit. Finish out the calc. There it goes. All right. So I want to look at a couple more things with you here. And then I want to compare this to a VMAP plan that is run under the exact same conditions, same IMRT constraint page. 
same prescription, same beam arrangement. Let me show you a couple things first. Um, we talked about SSO and how when we pair it with the dynamic conformal arc, you're going to get a little bit of modulation around the edges. So you can see just on the edges, this is the third beam, I'm getting that little bit of modulation. Again, just on the edges, not a lot of movement on this one, keeping it nice and tight. And back to the first beam, just to show you some of that modulation. You know, obviously with VMAT, you're going to have more modulation, because that's the whole point. But a little bit of modulation on the edges with DCA actually gives you a tight conformal plan. We can see that the isosceles curves look good. We had good coverage. And this darker line here that's further out, that's your 50% line. OK, so we always want to keep an eye on that and see what it's doing. OK. I'm going to go ahead and save this and just call it new. So what I want to do is take this and the VMAP plan that we previously ran. I'm going to load it into plan review so we can look at them side by side. Just going to blow that up a little bit to make it easier to see. So the VMAP plans up top. The plan we just ran, the DCA, is right down here. If I page through here, um, you can see as far as the conformality around that tumor, they're very similar. The 50% line, it's a little bit dodgy here on the VMAP side. And we could probably pull that in even tighter. Um, but uh, I wanted to give it a one-to-one -one comparison. So I wanted you to see if it's the same prescription and the same constraint page, what they would look like. The best way to really analyze this is to open up our staff page. So now we've got a one-to-one -one where I can put them side by side and see what I'm really looking at. The upper one is your DCA. The one right below it is your VMAP plan. You can see we have 97 versus about 100% coverage. So the coverage is very similar. Uh, actually, when it came to the heart, the DCA plan did a little bit better. But we noticed that that 50% line was a little raggedy on the VMAP. That makes sense that it would be slightly higher. But still well within parameters, not a problem. Good coverage on the GTV. V20 uh, down here, about the same. Uh, dose to the liver, about the same. Again, no dose to the cord. That's what we would expect. OK? So if I come back out, back into planning, here's the VMAP plan. I just want to show you. Constraints are the same, just like we had before. Prescription's the same. But I want to draw your attention down here to the total monitor units. We're looking at about 2,600 monitor units to deliver this VMAP plan. Okay? And VMAP's going to consistently have more monitor units than the DCA. Because you've got smaller size segments in that VMAP plan, which really is going to increase your treatment time. Okay, so that makes sense that we've got more monitor units here. If I come back and just click on my DCA plan, and we go and look at that, there's only about 1,600 monitor units there. Okay, So what we have here is basically an equivalently acceptable plan. DCA matches with the VMAP plan. So now, if we've got a respiratory challenge patient, I've got a plan here that uh, is equivalently uh, acceptable with respect to the VMAP plan. And obviously, your doctor would pick that, choose that, to determine that it's acceptable. And now, you've got a very similar plan that you could treat a respiratory challenge patient in less amount of time. So we don't have to have them on there longer than we need. If they're on the table less time, they're more comfortable, they're not moving around, and we're still treating that tumor 
the best possible means we can. Okay? So another thing about the 1600 monitor units that's nice, if you have a machine that has triple F capability, DCA lends itself very well to that functionality because less monitor units, higher dose rate, now we're able to hit it hard, hit it fast, and get that patient off the table. So something else to think about. So when you're running plans like this, and you have a singular lesion that maybe doesn't need as much modulation, it's not near something critical, uh, consider using something like DCA. Uh, and consider, again, like I said, using multiple beam arrays, because at least that way you can uh, weight them differently. And it gives you a little more uh, uh, play with how conformal and how well you distribute that dose. Okay? How are we doing on time? Not too bad. All right, well, that's kind of all I really wanted to cover. Let me click on some questions here. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's start here. How do you compress the 50% isodose line? The best way to do that is to allow the center of the plan to be hotter than your prescribed dose. Uh, and like I said, there's kind of two schools of thought. You can either really let it rip and get it as hot as possible. People consider that free dose. Or you can constrain how much hot, hot dose that's getting, and depending on if you're near something critical or not. Okay. Um, let's see. Trying to be, I uh, heard the PM say the variable dose rate will be available in the next release. Shouldn't this add even better modulation to the DCA plans when difficult cases arise? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. If you can get um, the variable dose rate associated with that, you're going to get a nicer DCA plan. Um, did you use the same arc angles for the arc plan as you did for the VMAP plan? Yes, we did. I wanted to be able to uh, show those to you side by side and be them high, highly comparable. It was the same arc pattern. Um, it was the same prescription. It was the same constraint page. Um, and obviously, we could have made that 50% isodose line on the VMAT look cleaner. But that probably would have added more monitoring units to the plan, which is not the case, not the point. We want to be able to get that, that uh, patient role in and uh, give them a good plan, but not torture them. Um, let me see here. Um, what kind of physics QA is involved for DCA? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think it's that much more than probably what you already do for VMAT or IMRT, and it's probably less, because really it's a static beam. Um, if you, with the SSO, if you looked at the modulation, um, the segments were really surrounding the target, uh, and the, the, they were only being manipulated on the edges, so the moving target is consistently being hit by the open segment. So it's probably not much more than what you would do for just looking at a standard, just a single open beam arc. And the physicists take those, those checks anyway. So it's not intensive, that's for sure. Um, how can there be zero dose to the cord on your lung plan when there's probably some exit dose from the arc as they pass by the cord? Uh, that's a good question. The, the, um, the computer wasn't picking it up, though. It might, it's got to be smaller than a percent if it's getting dose there. It would be less than a percent of the cord is picking up dose. Um, what is the difference between dynamic uh, arc and VMAT? Well, basically with DCA, like I just said, uh, it's an open field when we pair it with SSO. It's simply manip manipulating segments that are just around the edges. If we were doing it full VMAT, that modulation would be throughout the target and across the target. So with DCA, you don't get any modulation of the leaves across the target. With VMAT, you would. So there will be times as the arc is moving that you're actually blocking your target. 
let's see. Um, is DCA concept similar as Novalis Brain Lab Arc Planning? Um, I'm not familiar with the Novalis Brain Lab Arc Planning. Uh, that'd be a good question for you to ask them. Um, do you really believe that there are different modalities for lung SBRT? Yeah, I do. I think I think I don't think you should um, pigeonhole yourself into believing that VMAT is the only way to go. Um, I believe DCA is viable. Some people use DMLC as well because of the scanning effect you can get with VMAT arcs, and they eliminate it by using DMLC. Um, can you do either DCA or VMAT with non coplanar beams? Yes, you can. Just be careful not to bang into your patient. Let me see. Did I get all of them, Spencer? It looks like. Let me just jump in if any more come in. Uh, thank you for attending today. If you do need to get back to uh, your clinics, uh, you're welcome to do so. Um, I've got the quiz page up. Um, one of our members did help me find an error. I have fixed the date here. Let's see if it's gone up. Yeah, there we go. August 21st. It's all fixed. Um, so yeah. the quiz is ready. Um, if you've got any other questions, feel free to uh, put them up. Patty can ask, answer any more. I see, I see. Can Monica work independent of CMS focus? Yes, it can. Actually, the tools in Focal are already inside of Monaco. You don't need to have uh, Focal 